This week was challenge free, but each team had an opportunity to make a secret project that would put their house over the edge and add as much value as they could. Nate and Jeremiah built a movie theater in the basement of their home. David and Tiffany added a full bedroom and bath to their top floor, increasing their home to a six bedroom, four bathroom house. Allison and Mike installed an outdoor electric generator and ERV clean air filtration system to their home. While Brian and Mika turned their third car garage into a home gym with killer views. While all the teams performed admirably, Brian and Mika won the season and had their name installed on the block despite not winning any individual challenges. Tell me a little bit about that final moment when they announced the winner of the whole show. They set up fireworks in front of everyone's homes and there was like a misfire. So like all these things went off and nobody understood what was happening. But then the fireworks went off in front of Mika and Brian's and I don't think any of us still understood it. And then Brian finally understood it and he started crying and like his knees buckled and he lost it. I thought it was a misfire when that fireworks went off at their house. And I see David run from my right running, crying his eyes out, running over to Brian. Then I think they realized that then we're all collapsing and crying. And it was that beautiful moment of the true underdogs. They could have walked away with nothing, but those two worked so hard. It was beautiful, it was celebrated. I think that there was so much love surrounding them. And talk about a couple that actually deserve it. There was no resentment whatsoever, it was just, a really feel-good moment. Right before we announced the winner, what name did you think was gonna come out of our mouth? Brian, Brian and Mika. Mika. Brian After and Mika. we walked the houses, hands down, I think we did an interview, it was like, Brian and Mika won, y'all. We go home, yep. we turn off all this power. Yep. <laughs> At what point did you feel like they were gonna win? Right when we walked into their kitchen, mm -hmm. I went like this. Okay, Tiffany and I looked at each other at the same time, went like this. They win. I think I, that y'all have it. You really do? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Why are you making yeah. me want yeah. now? That makes me want to gag in a bad way because I'm nervous. They came in second so many times, but coming in second so many times consistently means winner. To me, it was not even a competition because they did such great, bold, wonderful, fabulous moves that made sense for modern day living and they deserve the win, hands down. They put a lot of effort into it. Yep. They put so much heart and soul into it, but also very sellable things. And I could not be more proud of those two. Yes. It came down to the appraisals. Yeah. As much design as Nate and Jeremiah pumped into their house, Brian and Mika went the opposite direction and focused a lot less on the design and a lot more on the family function. Yeah. Every space counts and every dollar counts. When you heard how close the appraisals were, I think it was $6,000, yeah. what were your thoughts? I was really shocked. I was definitely surprised um, that they were that close because obviously certain things you think you're doing and you're like, well, this is gonna set us apart. This is our moment or this is that thing that's gonna add all these values. So it was definitely surprising to hear that it was that close. I kind of thought we had it. Um, I thought I thought we were gonna take it. I mean, listen, the one thing about Brian and Mika that I really enjoyed was their kindness. Mm -hmm. You know, they were really sweet people. They worked really, really hard. The quality of what they did was beautiful in there. Like, everything was finished beautifully. How do you feel about who won the overall? What? We, we are still, I mean, it's, oh. it's you know, weeks later now. Um, we are still in shock that um, the street name was named after us. I mean, they just oh. blasted fireworks off in front of the house that won. And I honestly thought the guy doing the pyrotechnics, I thought the firework guy hit the wrong button. I was like, are you sure? Us? Cause all we didn't win all week. We didn't win the whole show. We didn't win any weeks. Oh my gosh. It was super emotional because I definitely do not cry. This one told me before going into the, the final judging, she said, Brian, no matter what happens, please don't cry. This was the first one to start crying. I think Still. You, you lost it though because our, our subs and our team oh my gosh. were right on the corner of our eyes. Cheering for us. And the mid, like, they came out there, we started hugging. David Bromstead gave me the biggest hug I've ever yeah. had. And I mean, you know what was so cool? Every single other team, like, genuinely were, they were at least, I they mean, were happy I, they for probably, us. they were happy for us and just. It, it couldn't have ended better. What would you say was your favorite part of this entire experience? Like, what's your takeaway? Spending time with other oh. talent, 100%. Spending time with other talent. 
Um, being yeah. able to be around them and share this experience. And at the end of the day, I created some wonderful bonds and great friends and uh, friends who I already had but are much closer because of it. Like it bonds you for life, whether you like it or not. And so that was my favorite part. It definitely would be getting to hang out with other talent, you know, and then just, you know, having those chats about different experiences or different shows, how they're handling this, how they're handling that. It was like camp almost. It's like boot camp for designers. My favorite part was the friendships. My favorite part was the excited to get there in the morning for all of us to hang out and see each other and have lunch and just laugh. Honestly, that was my favorite part. Hands down, it was my favorite part also, was getting to know Allison more, getting to know David, Tiffany, Nate, Jeremiah, Mika, Brian. I will never forget that experience, and because I went there, I have gained new friends that I know that I will see in the future. Without that, I don't think it would have been that much fun. I don't think it would have been any fun, to be honest. We had this day after that we, after we were done with the show and the finale that we were all together, and there was this moment right before everybody left where we all hugged and like this big collective sigh because I feel like, you know, their stakes were so high. I think we got to know them all a lot. We respect them all creatively tremendously. We learned a lot about each other. It was kind of like personality boot camp. And, you know, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. Being on the show is the win. Um, and I do believe that uh, wholeheartedly now. By far, my favorite part was on the last day before they announced the winner, where we literally just got to go and like see everybody else's houses. Come on in! Hi. Okay, okay! Yes! Okay! What? Ah, <laughs> uh, damn. Oh my, I don't even want to step oh. in here. That was so cool because we kind of got to interact with everybody in their space. And mm. at that point, everybody knew each other pretty well. So we were all just goofing around and, and very comfortable. It made, it took a little bit of the edge off yep. going into the final judging too, because you now at this point, you know what all the houses look like. When we were walking through Nate and Jeremiah's and Mike and Allison's and even Dave and Tiffany's, it feels like you're walking through the pages of a magazine. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is artwork. And, uh, you know, we're just honored to be here. Okay, so here's the real question. Okay. Season three, Allison, are you coming back? I will absolutely come back as a uh, as the host. <laughs> Who better to judge than a two-time contestant loser of Rock the Block? I love it. So I would come back. I would never come back as a contestant. I swear on my Yaya's life, may I get struck by lightning if I don't keep this. I'm never going to be a contestant on Rock the Block again, but I will be a, I will be the host. Oh, no! No, I am not. I'm glad that I did it. So happy that I did it, but it's one of those things. It's one of those things that you can just check off your list that of things that you've done. Yep. <laughs> if they asked me to do season three, I would ask for a one-month vacation after, paid by them, on an island with my own yacht, purchased <laughs> by the all everything, all by them. Other than that, nah, nah. Now I, I'm I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm still so exhausted. I can't believe those are your terms. Mine would be a little steeper. Oh no, I I went. That was just the top three. That's it. <laughs> like, <laughs> The list is long. <laughs> Listen, I'm very glad we did season two, but I would never do it again. Even if there was like a second pandemic and Jared was like, no, we've been locked in now for three years. 100% no, I'm gonna sit on the sofa and eat egg rolls. <laughs> I imagine that doing Rock the Block is what spelunking must feel like. <laughs> like you wanna try it, everybody does it once, but you don't really need to do it again. <laughs> you've done it, you've had the thrill, the fear, the terror, the disappointment, um, and we're done, no more. We're a, it, was a, it was a journey and we were thrilled we took the journey. We we're also thrilled to leave it behind. We still can't believe it happened, but um, it was an emotional roller coaster this whole journey. Like I said, it just, it, it tested us on so many different levels, you know, uh, emotionally, physically, and creatively. Behind the scenes, watching our whole crew that worked with us side by side for six weeks, watching them celebrate with us, um, just made See, it. See, I'm not crying anymore. I know. Though. I just, I, every time I think about it, it's just, I just, it's just so emotional for me because I know how much everybody wanted this for us. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> she don't like when I start crying on 
Camera. <laughs> oh. I got makeup on, so you know me. I'm like, nope, you dare. Don't you even think about it. And a street named after us, which is, it's called Kleinschmidt Way. I don't even know how they fit our long last name on a street sign, but they did. I know, I hope that didn't bring the uh, value down after that, because I was like, yo, this, <laughs> this street name is, it's kind of long, I know. <laughs> <laughs>